Hello Sim Captains and crew and welcome to the Zebo 737-800. Today we sit at Cape Canaveral and we're going to take off and do some air work familiarizing ourselves with the autopilot, mode control panel, and how it functions. Stay tuned. Sim captains and crew, we're here at Cape Canaveral and uh, we're going to begin our taxi here. I have the wing tanks loaded. As you can see there, we got about 8,500 pounds in each. Uh, center tank has none. We're just going to go up and do some pattern work again today just to familiarize ourselves with the uh, mode control panel here in the autopilots. We'll show how to, how to use that and how to get it to function and uh, what some of the buttons do. We'll take a look at this photo and on the left hand side, uh, the left square there, you can see that's the auto throttle arm switch. With this in the off position, none of your uh, mode control panel speeds or your FMS speeds or FMC speeds, excuse me, will function. So it's very important to know where this switch is and how to turn it on or off. On the right hand side, we have the autopilot master command switches and the disengage. Uh, the CMD A and B, we have two channels, uh, the A channel and B channel, of course, for redundancy or uh, pilot flying, not flying, as they're typically used. And below the big white bar is a disengage. So if anything goes wrong while you're in uh, autopilot operation, you can click the disengage, you'll get the uh, dweedler for the disconnect, and then you can continue flying the aircraft manually. But these two main switches are very important that we know where they're located at and what they do. The next things we want to discuss is the mode control panel, which is functionally the entire autopilot panel containing all of our modes of operation and our flight mode enunciator. The flight mode enunciator is going to show us what the aircraft is doing in its speed, lateral, and vertical profiles on the primary flight display. We're going to divide the mode control panel into three main sections and also the flight mode enunciator. This section will be mostly our speed. We have the auto throttles N1, speed level change VNAV. All of these have to do with speed control and the flight mode enunciator will also tell us that on the left third of the PFD. Now we'll look at the lateral control. This gives us our heading, bank angle, lateral navigation, VOR localizer approach, heading select modes is the center third of our flight mode enunciator. And our third and final area we'll discuss prior to today's flight is the vertical profiles. Here we have our altitude, the altitude intervene, your vertical speed, altitude hold, and I've also included the approach mode. Once the approach button is selected, that will allow your aircraft to follow the glide slope if you're properly tuned to an ILS. And finally, here's a photo uh, taken from this very flight, which we'll see later, that has our mode control panel and our flight mode enunciator in operation. Now if we look at the flight mode enunciator there we can see that we have MCP speed and that we are in heading select mode and altitude hold mode. We can also see from the center of the PFD that our autopilot is to command. With that let's continue on. On runway one three We'll align the aircraft up, bring N1 to 40%, and then select N1. And this will begin our takeoff. Um, as you can see here, we also have the auto throttle armed, of course, and the FMC data is all correct and installed. Otherwise, the aircraft would not be able to perform this takeoff, and you might be left with a manual uh, thrust control for departure. B1, B1, rotate.
and we have no real set agenda for today so we're just gonna climb out uh, get out over the ocean a little bit here do some flying around nothing nothing really planned we just want to uh, put the aircraft through its paces and show you guys how to operate it in some very basic autopilot functions. The aircraft's currently climbing in N1, and we have the speed bugged for 200. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip over to the speed mode now by selecting speed on the left-hand side of the mode control panel. And this is going to allow the aircraft to capture our targeted speed of 200. Now if we look over to the left third of the flight mode enunciator, we can now see that MCP speed is selected, and the speed is decreasing. And we'll take a look over here at our Navigraph charts to see where we're at in relation to the field over here. And uh, I think I've got the approach loaded here. So we'll just take a look at runway 31 here at Cocoa Beach. Now we can see we're pretty much flying directly out, which that's all right. I just wanted to get out over the ocean and... Um, just find some airspace to play around in so we can do some climbs, some descents, and some speed changes. So um, that's no big deal. We'll go ahead and continue taking a look at the uh, mode control panel here and some of the functions on it. We'll zoom in a little bit here and take a look again at our flight mode enunciator. You can see here we have MCP speed selected heading select for our lateral navigation and our altitude hold is currently selected for a vertical. As we've discussed, the, the panel, much like the enunciator, is divided into uh, thirds. So the left and the left and middle, they all correspond uh, with one another. And we'll take a look down at the uh, CDU here for the FMC. Normally our cruise altitude would be loaded in here and our target speeds for the uh, climb. As you can see we're in economy climb uh, mode right now or page. And you can see our speed 250 below 10,000 uh, 10, feet. Our N1 speeds are there as well. So you would see that here on the, the left side. We'll move back over to a more centralized view of the mode control panel. And a lot of people may not be aware that there's an outer ring here on the heading indicator. This is your bank angle limiter. It goes between uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 degrees. 30 degrees, of course, being the standard rate turn uh, for an aircraft, meaning uh, 360 degrees turned in two minutes. So by adjusting this, you can actually limit the uh, the bank angle that the aircraft will turn. Uh, I believe it automatically limits also to 10 degrees above a certain speed. I don't know if that's 250, 260 knots, but in cruise it typically is going to be about the 10 degrees. So if we adjust the heading here, you can see we have it in the 30 degrees, so it'll, it'll roll. And then if we look over on our primary flight display, you can see also that we have a 30 degree bank 
as indicated our vertical tapes are running nearly straight up and then you have a 10 20 and then we are on the 30 degree if we zoom in here and take a look and we also have 315 now is selected as our heading as we can see there and then if we look over to our uh, our compass over here then we have our magenta line also indicating the 315 And here's what I was talking about earlier. You can see the, uh, the 0, 10, 20, and the 30 degrees. Now if we click that back, let's do that. Let's put it at 10 degrees. You can see the aircraft starting to roll to a flatter turn. And then if we look back over to the PFT, now we're only at a 10 degree bank. Because we're only one line off that vertical axis. And the aircraft continues its turn to 315. And we can turn it back up and you can see the aircraft again. It rolls back in. Uh, now not as much because we're nearing the end of our turn. And now we'll take a look at how to operate the aircraft in heading select mode. Of course here in the, uh, in the center we're going to have heading select um, illuminated. And then let's say air traffic were to give us a heading of... Um, 350, how are we going to enter that? Well, we'll go to the inner knob and then we're going to turn that to 350 again with that heading select illuminated. And then you can see on our uh, HSI or MFD there on the side, um, we have 350 selected. Our heading select is illuminated. And then the aircraft will continue to make the turn to 350. And this is a real simple way if you want to practice your landings or doing pattern, pattern work, excuse me. Uh, you can take off and then make your standard 90 degree turns and then come back around and practice your approaches. This is how you would do that with your altitude hold and then your heading mode. So we'll flip this over. We'll limit to a 10 degree bank angle and we'll imagine that... Uh, We've been given another heading here, let's say 315, and it gets back where we started. And you can see we're, we're holding a, a less steep bank here, but it is continuing to 315. And for one more demonstration, we've rolled the bank angle back to 30 degrees. And we can just play here with the heading. And you can see that the aircraft will begin to turn. So this is, again, this is how you're going to navigate. Um, even you could, you can hop in the airplane if you don't really know how to load the FMC. And um, as long as you got a general compass heading, you can fly your aircraft wherever you want to go for any, any direction change, whether it's ATC vectors, or here we can use our HSI and just navigate from airport to airport that's in the local area. Uh, you can see they're showing up right there. So we can simply turn the heading knob and fly direct to whichever one of those that we want to. And that's a very simple way to uh, use the automation level of the airplane uh, to get you to where you want to go, even if you want to, <laughs> if you want to take your 737 to go sightseeing. Um, this is how you do it. Now the next thing we'll talk about is speed. We have our speed held there at 200. We have speed selected, so we're gonna increase that to 230 knots. You can see the aircraft is uh, advancing the thrust. Pardon me there. And it's gonna speed up to capture our 230 knots as signified at the top of the speed tape and the magenta indicator there. So now we have 230 knots. We'll hop down here to the FMC. We'll take a look and see that turbine N1 is 88.0. We can see that also in the ICAST. So if we select now the N1, and remember the auto throttle arm has to be on for any of these speed modes. So if we select N1, the engines will now command the 88.0 that is also seen down in our FMC. And the speed will increase. So we have our, our flight level which right now is 6,000 feet. 
So it's going to hold this, and you can see now we're getting close to the red, the red uh, V and E here. So we don't want to go over that. So we'll select speed again. And when you hit the N1, it's simply going to command that power, which is what you do on on takeoff or uh, you know your toga, your go around. And now it's 87.9. And then, uh, yeah, as I'd mentioned here, uh, we're going to uh, decelerate back to 230 knots. We put it back in speed mode. So again, that N1 is just going to command that thrust setting. Speed is actually going to go off your indicated airspeed. And we'll go ahead and stick the flaps out here to the flight detent to lose a little bit of speed here and bring us back down. In the circular gauge here, if you guys have this enabled through your Avitab, is your angle of attack indicator, AOA. And on your PFD, we're currently about three degrees nose up. Each of the small lines is two and a half degrees, uh, followed by the five, and then the large ones at 10 degrees. So um, that's there so you can get a, an idea of what the aircraft is doing and how it's performing. And the next thing we're going to do here as I raise the altitude up to uh, 10,000 feet here is uh, we're going to do a level change. So level change is close to, it's functionally an airspeed hold. A lot of the uh, smaller aircraft, some GA with more modern avionics, turboprops, uh, that kind of stuff, they have an IAS mode. This functions the same. So as we select level change, what we're going to do is we're going to get our 230 knots indicated climb speed. You can see here we're accelerating slightly past that. But the aircraft is now trimming. Um, our thrust has come up to our 87.9. And now the aircraft is, you can see, climbing four, over 4,000 feet a minute now. So uh, the IAS mode is it's going to advance the thrust. And then it's going to climb as fast as it can at that speed that you've indicated. So that's really advantageous because it gives you speed protection or uh, stall protection uh, by maintaining a constant speed. A lot of people like to climb into vertical speed mode, which is fine until you get higher and the aircraft no longer produces the power. And then you can actually end up in a stall, which is, as you can imagine, undesirable. So the flight level change or filch or IAS oh, mode good. on this aircraft, it is a flight level change. and. Um, that's my preferred method on here and you could see actually right before that uh, right before that we had uh, you can see now it's MC, MCP speed heading select and altitude hold uh, but before we actually had a, uh, a level change and I think it was N1 indication on the flight mode enunciator And now we're going to decrease the speed to 215 knots uh, with our indicated airspeed knob here. And you can see over on the PFD again, on the airspeed tape, uh, we have that new commanded value. And it's decreasing to 215 knots. And we have our speed now at 215, and we're going to decrease our altitude here. We'll run it down to we'll go 8,000, and we'll do level change. And you can see the aircraft is now starting to pitch down. And it's going to select a level to where it can maintain the uh, speed we've asked it to of 215. So you can see currently it's uh, 1300 feet a minute vertical, uh, 1200. So it'll trim itself again to try and hold that. A lot of times when you're on approach, you'll see um, you know, where you'll need to stick your spoilers out or something. And that just means that the aircraft can't keep, it, uh, can't keep up with it. Uh, there's not enough drag. So uh, we can see here that Right now, at this low of speed, at 1,000, 1,050 feet a minute, it's not that big of a deal. The aircraft can easily maintain it. We could stick flaps or spoilers out, but it's doing a good job of maintaining it. So we'll increase the speed again 
to 220 and then you can see um, it hasn't caught the speed up yet so it actually steepens the descent and then now it's starting to uh, it's going to capture the 8000 and then you can see our vertical speed flattening out again now that it has obtained the 220 knots. And perhaps one of the things I haven't been discussing much on here is the uh, is the flight mode enunciator. You can see it went from N1 to MCP speed again. And those have the green boxes around it. So that's letting us know that that it's armed and then when the box goes away it has captured it. So now we have 220. Our altitude hold is going to disappear here as you can see now as it has uh, obtained the 8,000 feet. So that flight mode enunciator is really telling you what's uh, active and what's not. We'll swing the heading bug here as well just to uh, fly off in a different direction here. We'll head over toward KMCO, which is Orlando International. We've got nowhere to go, so we'll just head over here and uh, take a look at what's going on. And actually, this is a good time to show off some of our scenery over here. If you guys are interested in some nice ortho, you can go to the uh, verticalsims.com. They have the, this is the V States, Florida, but they have uh, Florida, Georgia, I believe Iowa, and about two or three other states. And uh, they do really good work. I've really enjoyed this the month or so I've had it so far. I also have Georgia, and. Um, my first ortho because I'm too lazy to download it and do all of the other work that's involved in it. I simply go there, download the file. I think Florida is about 60 gig once it's unpacked. Um, and from what I understand, they do some color correction and uh, color balancing to it and, and tweak them so they kind of remove the, the cloud layers and shadows and stuff. Anyway, it ends up to be a real nice product. I enjoy it and uh, figured I'd show it off to you guys here on this video today. So if you like it, go ahead and, and head over there to uh, verticalsims.com and uh, take a look at it. They also have some payware airports uh, if you're interested in those. And one of the other functions of the MCP and probably one of the more important ones that I forgot to mention earlier is the speed. Um, I'm recording this one on another day as you can see. The uh, clouds have changed or our weather a little more hazy with lower clouds but we're going to move forward here and uh, we'll use the uh, speed control and you can simply adjust that we saw it a little bit with the flight level change uh, but you can adjust it simply with uh, a turn of the knob to adjust it to your desired speed while in uh, level flight as long as the autopilot master command is on and the auto throttles are engaged and so we'll go ahead and adjust that speed now for uh, 200 and let's do 245 and then we get the thrust levers advancing of course and over on our PFD we're seeing again the uh, magenta 245 and the uh, speed carrot I guess if you will um, and then that's pretty much what you do in straight level or actually any speed adjustment that you can do as long as you're in speed mode and then you can slow it back down the same Pardon me there while I adjust that. Um, again, this was a different day, so I took off and didn't finish up my post-flight checks or post-climb uh, checks there. And then you simply uh, reduce the speed back to 230 knots or so, whatever. Anyway, as long as that um, as long as that speed is on, then you'll see that. Uh, here we have the uh, you can slow for an approach, so we'll kind of simulate this. We're going to reduce the speed, extend the flaps. Uh, you can see here we have flaps one and then we're going to bring the speed down so if we do flaps or uh, speed 210 we have our flap speeds placarded over below our gear handle 
and then we can start adding flaps. So we can watch that and our indicated airspeed for the flap speeds, and then uh, you can dial it back to say 200 knots. I think you're good for flaps. Uh, I know one, two, and five, and possibly even 10 to 200 and uh, nearly 250 knots. So you can dial that speed down to 200 and just extend them on schedule to create a nice, uh, slow, stable approach. And that'll really help you control the speed as the flaps come out. It'll increase the drag. Uh, so if you're descending to your uh, initial approach fix, all that'll help you control that. In the next segment here, what I've tuned into on the course, as you can see, is 200 on the left of the mode control panel. And we're going to select that radial to come uh, to come inbound on. We're tuned to the ORL, Orlando VOR. And then we were in heading mode, so then by selecting VOR LOC, the aircraft is then going to roll and capture that course inbound to that nav aid. So <clears throat> this also functions uh, similar when you're on the ILS. So you're you're telling the aircraft which one you want to, uh, which radial you want to track. See if we adjust it here to 204, the aircraft then makes a slight adjustment as it's trying to pick up that other radial. I want to make sure this switch here is in VOR1, if that's the one, or that VOR is on if you're going to use VOR. Now you have off and ADF there as well. If you're using the FMC, those uh, switch positions aren't as significant. You do have to be plotted for an intercept uh, to a radio, whether it be for an ILS or a VOR. Um, it won't capture it unless, you, uh, unless you're on an intercept path for that radio. You can see at the center of the flight mode enunciator as well, we have the VOR loc set there. So we'll increase the speed. Uh, to 220 you've seen how to do that and uh, that's one of the easier ones I think to figure out but you can continue to just track this radial inbound and uh, you can do this for cross-country navigation if you want to use uh, other nav aids outside the FMC this is a uh, much needed skill in the uh, fly J sim 727 yeah, the 727 series and the 737-200 that they have. So you will need the VOR navigation. And this is how you would do it as well. You can click the LNAV. It's not going to do anything. We, we don't have the information loaded into it. As soon as we click it, and uh, we're locked onto that VOR. Now we're seeing that it's tracking slightly off of it. And there's a little bit of wind, as you can see. Uh, wind's 121 at 11. So it's applying a little wind, wind correction angle to it. No big deal. But this is how we track our VORs. And we'll clean up our bug, keep our heading bug straight away. Should air traffic vector us off our present heading. And here you can see how we're navigating toward that ORL beacon with our Navigraph charts overlaid there in our Avitab. One of the other functions available to us is in the vertical speed mode. By increasing our altitude, we'll go from six to 8,000 feet in this example, and we'll simply roll the thumb wheel to a, uh, let's do a vertical climb rate of 1,000 feet. The aircraft will begin pitching as you can see here. 
and then on our flight mode enunciator right here we get a vertical speed mode which that's to be expected you know we did ask it to do that and it's also uh, climbing at about 950 there one now 1,000 feet per minute up to 8,000 feet now there is no speed limitation in this so if you climb at 10,000 feet a minute um, the aircraft will do it until it cannot any longer and then you'll start losing airspeed so there's really no uh, safety margin with this however sometimes with different crossing restrictions and altitudes this might be a more desirable mode to operate the aircraft in let's turn that vertical speed up a little bit more to 2500 there we get the thrust advancing uh, because the aircraft is able to do it and we'll climb through the last thousand, thousand feet or so here at this higher rate And now we're almost uh, 2,500 feet per minute. And there we get the altitude hold uh, armed by the green box around the FMA. And then once it captures, that box will go away. And it'll show us that that is uh, now our new altitude. And this also works the same on the descent. We'll dial that back down to uh, 6,000 feet. select our nose down and we can do there's a thousand feet and now if we watch this our uh, as it trims for the thousand feet let's go to 1500 uh, you'll see the speed actually start to increase so we're nose down 1500 feet a minute and our airspeed is slightly increasing as you can see or 225 uh, 226 knots 227 see it's gaining speed as we do this if we want to control that uh, we can actually hit the uh, level change button as we discussed uh, earlier and then that's going to pitch the aircraft to bring us back to 220 knots which is what we have currently in the uh, the airspeed function and we're back to 223 and then once it uh, once it captures the 220 knots then it'll start the descent at our desired rate. Or I'm sorry, not our desired rate because we've taken it out of that. It's going to descend at 220 yeah, knots. If we extend the flaps, we'll put flaps one out now. That increases the drag over the wings, of course. So then you can see our speeds tumbling. And then since we are in that level change mode, the aircraft's going to pitch down again. In order to uh, in order to keep that commanded airspeed, and now for fun, we're going to fly back outbound here, and then come in for uh, runway 17 on the ILS. We'll skip through some of this, but you see, we're just doing some. Uh, operations here on the mode control panel so we're adjusting the heading to fly back out our um, altitude that I'm going to join the ILS is going to be at 3,000 feet we'll just use this and we'll fast forward more to the approach uh, hopefully we've gone over enough of the procedures in depth of how to use it for for any of you if you have any questions of course please feel free to uh, comment and let us know uh, for those of you, obviously, at the beginning of the video, we had 200 knots bugged. Uh, that's not how you do it. You would have V2 speed, and uh, etc. Um, I know a lot of times when doing these, we sometimes shortcut stuff in order to get to the content that we're trying to produce. And sometimes you miss things. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you bug different speeds, and uh, it tends to open yourself up to criticism. Of course, uh, everyone is a critic. And that's fine. We appreciate the discussions and the comments and everything. So uh, keep those coming. If there's any areas of this where you need maybe some clarification, or you can provide additional information to uh, uh, to the viewers, to the subscribers, please feel free to comment. It. Uh, we really enjoy interacting with you guys. So we're going to skip forward here, rejoin this approach, and um, continue on into uh, MCO. And we're now turned inbound on the localizer. We can see it coming in. If we look at our PFD from left to right, 
we get the flaps kicked out here and begin our approach. And there we can see the localizer nearly going across center. So we're going to click the OR loc. Aircraft is going to roll to capture that localizer. We've overshot it slightly. Uh, that's fine. You can see how the aircraft is uh, is responding. I'm going to go ahead and stick the gear out. Normally you would hold uh, hold that for uh, flaps 15 and about 10 miles, uh, or sorry, about five miles usually would be flaps 15 gear down. Uh, we're at 11 miles and we're now at uh, flaps 10. And the aircraft is now uh, continuing. You can see here the localizer now is to the right. We're crossing right here the glide slopes. We're gonna click the approach mode. And it's moving down now to capture the glide slope. We can see the localizer center line is slightly to our right as well. And we have no approach ref, so we'll have to click that real quick. Get that loaded in here. Our radar altimeter is now working at 2500. We have the airport in sight. We'll roll the speed down again. Now if we try to arm autopilot B, you can see on our PFD it says single channel. Um, this, this ILS here is uh, not a CAT, uh, CAT 2, CAT 3. I believe it was only a CAT 1 approach. But uh, you'll see here in just a moment, I think our uh, channel B disconnects. So in order to do an auto land, I was going to try and attempt it, but uh, quite honestly, I really don't care. Um, I normally don't auto land it, and there's, I guess, very few times when you would actually want to do it anyway. Um, you know, the pilots practice it every six months in the sim. If they don't do it more frequently than that, sure, uh, your mileage may vary in airline policies in the real world are different. But it is a nice feature to have uh, to have there as a backup when the visibility is really bad or ceilings are really low. There we can see we're centered on our localizer now, centered on our glide slope. Uh, we have a 650 feet per minute descent rate. And if we drag down to our chart here and we look, um, see we've got uh, 120 knots is 637 and 140 knots is 740. So we're right there in the middle of that sweet spot. Our ground speed is 129, so that is all right. Now we have flaps 30. We have our gear down and locked. We have our auto brake set. All that is looking good. We'll continue to head on down here. And for this landing, I'm actually not going to touch anything. I am going to keep it. Uh, I'm going to keep it as it is right now, and we'll see what the result of this is. Some of you may already know, some of us may not, so uh, normally within a couple miles we'll disconnect and then hand fly it in two to three miles sometimes, um, depending on the visibility, if it's if it's low, I mean, you, you've you got to have the go, no go decision by the decision height, which is typically uh, 200 Accounting. feet for an ILS, Seven left. at least a cat one. And here we are nearing the approach for 1-7 left. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. And here we are now, just under 200. Uh, we get the middle marker beacon there at about the half mile off the 100. runway. And there we'll watch our glide slopes. See, our glide slope's diving down. And we have the aircraft 40, coupled 30. to it, so this is yeah. the result. And now we've got this going on while it figures out what to do. On the plus side, a landing like this, you do not have to use the entire length of the runway. The, uh, the friction of your burning aircraft on the pavement 
is significantly higher than a rolling tire on the runway. So if you need to uh, land in a short field in a 737 in this example, I suggest you try this method. So just leave the ILS coupled. Of course, I'm kidding with that. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the external view on that as well. Let's do that now. We'll let this run the rest of the way out. We thank all of you for joining us today on Flight Brothers FT. Hope you enjoyed our uh, mode control panel tutorial and learned something. Remember to plan the flight and fly the plan. We'll see you next week.